All right, what is going on guys? Today's video, we got a new product here. This is Xtrons, one of the best, or actually the best car place to get radios and everything else like that. This is the Honda 2003-2007 version, and it does have two gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of ROM. Very nice packaging here, black box. Let's go ahead and get into it. Driving entertainment. So right now we have the base model, which is still gonna be really good. I've heard a lot of good reviews on this already. So we have the Extrons user manual. If you need any troubleshoot issues or how to install it and everything else like that. They do have an amazing customer support so you can actually get information based off of them as well. So this fits the existing panel and it looks like it's very, very simple. Look at this. Right here we have basically all the cables we need. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out the way. And that's everything you get. Very well protected. And it came in like two days. So I'm gonna save this, or actually I wanna open it now. So this is the Extrons. You have basically most of the power here. You have something covered up right there. It says warning, do not use any power cable other than the provided. So don't use the existing power cables, use the ones that are included. And then on the front, you have everything else. You have the mic restart. You have the power, home, backwards, volume up and down. You can also program it to have it on the wheel itself. You have the driver's um, temperature and the passenger's temperature. You can control the main temperature here, out, AC, mode, off, the front, rear, auto, dual, and you also have the ventilation, like however you want it to cycle through. So this does support dual, dual, um, obviously ventilation, so it's really good. Basically how it is on most, how it is on the original manufacturer. And then everything in here, so you have your little AC box here like your little converter, one of your USB cables, another USB cable, you have two of them. You have your antenna right here. This is just a lot of cables here. These are RCA, so for audio. I don't think you'll need all of them, but you do have a 3.5 jack. And then right here you do have brake, your reverse, and then two other ones. This is, I believe, the yeah dual zone and single zone, depending on what your AC supports. And you do have right here the main cable. It looks like this was manufactured in 2021. So we're pretty much good on that. Most of these inputs are dummy proof, so you should be good on that. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up right now and I will be right back. So usually you want to prep this, but what I mean by that is that you gotta actually plug in some stuff here. So some cables and stuff. Most of this fits like automatically. Like if you were to plug this in here, it would fit automatically uh, or some of these have similar ones, but most of them are like, or four prong, two prong, three prong, four prong, and then like 12 prong, eight prong, something like that. It's all spaced out, so it's kind of dummy proof on that. This is what we're using for the car here. This is all the plugged in properly. We have this blue cable here, and then you have another little colored cable, the thickest one goes into the bottom, and then the other end goes into the little control box or deco decoder, if you want to call it. And then it also has a four pin right here that goes in there, and then the dual AC goes in the opposite end. And then you also have this wire right here, which is for reverse, brake, everything else like that. If you have a camera, I just recommend plugging it in just in case. And then plug this in as well. This is the other end of the uh, little four pin right there. And then right here you have the RCA cables, which goes on the top right there, very simply. And then the GPS and antenna are right there. So you got both of those right there. I'm sure you haven't saw that as well. And the antennas right here. And then the USB ports, they are basically specific. So they have six prong right there, six prong goes right there, and then has a four prong right there, and they both go right there. So USB ports are right there. And if you have a single zone, then you use a single zone AC. And then you do need one of these little kits here, plastic pry bars and other stuff like that. Definitely recommend it. Just get it if you're gonna be doing a lot of car work or just get it in general. You're gonna be needing that, those pry tools, as well as a power tool to be able to actually disassemble the screws, because there is a few screws on here, as you can see right there, three on top and two on bottom. And then you do have, obviously, your bits, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, should be good. We're gonna go and disconnect the battery real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so we got it disconnected here, as you can see. We just did both of them just in case, but you could do one or the other. And uh, we're gonna get started here. Now, like I mentioned before, the tools you need, you probably do need a pry tool, so make sure you get one of those. Now that the engine is off, what you're gonna wanna do, unplug anything that, if you do have anything plugged in, such as uh, this right here, I have this little old Bluetooth transmitter, two USB ports. I might still use this just for the USB ports, but I'm not too sure. 
We, we got that, we're gonna remove that. Also, I recommend pulling the e-brake all the way up so you have more room to work with, like this. If you have anything on the vents right here, remove that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove this. You can start at the top or the bottom. I recommend starting at the bottom first. So you're gonna wanna go and park, obviously. And then you're gonna go get a flathead screwdriver or something, and you're gonna remove this part right here. I'll go ahead and get closer. So right here, we do have this little slot or a pry tool if you have one. Basically just lift it up here, removed it. All right, and then you're just gonna bring your key in here and then bring the gear shifter all the way back. And then that's pretty much how you're gonna go into the last mode, basically. Uh, it's a little harder to get into, so I recommend something a lot thinner. The corners or edges, whatever you wanna call it, and then move your way in. You might need to use a uh, flat head first. Bro, the door keeps closing. Uh, so to do this tray, it's a lot harder than the top piece because the top piece, you have a bigger crevice. This one is very, very tight crevice, but I recommend starting on the corners or if you see a part opening already, actually they have these little tweezer things. See if they work. Oh, well, they kind of do. See, use this. There we go. Yeah, teamwork. So as long as you get one side or just, there we go, yeah. As long as you get one side, it's gonna be a lot easier. You can just remove this here. There we go. And it is held up by two power cables for both the high and low ventilation here. I'll go and show you. So as you can see, we do have two, it's held up by two little power cables. Very easy to uh, untach these. They're just locks. There's a little button and then just wiggle it out. And then you get to remove this here and then just move it to the side. And then we're gonna go ahead and move to the ashtray here. We're gonna move it with the rubber, just pry tool, move it to the side. And that does reveal two screws right here. So there's one right there and one right there. And you're gonna go ahead and remove those. That's one. Make sure you don't lose the screws. I recommend putting stuff in the cup holder or to a proper spot. Mine's actually held up by two uh, little plastic pieces. So I might not have to take those off, like unhook them. All right, there we go. And then you're just gonna go ahead and remove the cigarette lighter. Just a little button press and then move it to the side. But that you have that. There are two more screws right here holding up this little tray, which you need to remove. Let's go ahead and remove that now. Let me go and show you the screws actually. So right here, that's one screw. And right here, that's another screw right there. Go to move that. One. Can't really see the second one, hold on. There we go. It's very important to have a magnetic tip because you could easily drop these in here. If you do, just get, you know, your own drill or just try to get the bit yourself if you have small enough fingers or get one of these little tweezer things, try to fish it out if you drop one. I did not drop any, but there is other stuff in here, which is pretty interesting. Okay, now that you got that removed, you can go to remove this tray here, but you need to wiggle it around. There we go, should be able to remove it. A little you know fidgety you need to fidget with it but it's pretty easy to remove and then from here all you have to do so you're going to want to remove this top piece right here yeah and to do that obviously get your pry tool start from the bottom here and then just kind of pry it open from the bottom there we go never mind move to the side you have to remove three screws on top right here and two on the bottom i'll go and show you up close so one two and three remove those three all right that's one that's two and that's three all right there is two screws on the bottom which you do have to get so there's one right there and one right there so it might be a little bit hard to get to if you have a power drill so i recommend using probably a hand a hand one but should be able to be good i'm gonna remove those really quick might be hard to see as well. Looks like my drill barely fits. So we got both of those there. Now we could go to remove this. Be careful. Now we could go ahead and pull from the top and the bottom. So you want to pull on this plastic housing for the bottom. And then just pull slightly until it reveals all the cables and stuff. Don't pull out too much. That's what she said. But you want to be able to just access the cables. So go ahead and unplug all of the cables from the back before disconnecting it. All right, from this point, you can't really remove it any further, so you're gonna have to disconnect whatever you have from here, disconnect all the wires here. Most of them are a little different. Some of them are pull, some of them are wiggle. You just gotta wiggle with it. And then they will also have these little rubber grommets, so you will probably need a plastic pry tool 
so we would actually remove them from the sockets. So we got one, two, I believe dual zone AC right here, the green ones. All right, so I got the blue one connected. They're all color coded. Everything is connected properly like I showed you before. Now I just gotta input the GPS and the antenna right here. And uh, this white one you can leave out. It doesn't really matter. The blue one is all you need and everything else is good. So we use the GPS here. We're gonna put it on top of the this dash part, the plastic, since metal does interfere with the transmitter. So make sure you put it on top of plastic. Fix this right here onto this part and then tighten it into place with the hex. All right, and then we just gotta put this back. So that's all you need to do. Make sure you just kind of tidy up a little bit and then you should be good. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and put the antenna here. So it has 3M adhesive and we're gonna stick it on the back of this part right here. Peel this off, stick it on the bottom. And now just do everything you did backwards. We're gonna put these three screws on top. All right, and then the two screws on the bottom like I showed you before. Oh wait, it looks like we don't need the two screws on the bottom anymore because the old unit had more weight. So we don't need those two screws on the bottom. Next, we got to put in this little tray here. Make sure to plug in the cigarette lighter as well and then put in both trays. Or actually, you got to do the screws first. Okay, now you can put the trays in and one of them clicks into place. There we go. And now we could get our plastic piece here and then plug in the both cables here. Press it down until you hear two clicks. Now we can put this plastic piece back. So move this in park, get your little plastic piece, put it back in the little hole, and then we can go ahead and put this top piece back. There we go, and we're done. Put the battery back in place, put your accessories back on. All right, so now we're done with the installation. This is just a installation video unboxing. I will have a full review as well as everything in the features going into the stereo in depth. So if you want to see that video, if it's already out, you can check where the screen's on the top left. I just want to give you an actual good review and a more in-depth review so you can see it. This I just got this right now, so that's why it's just an installation video. But without further ado, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.